Yes, I think we are there. Uh, perfect. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, and thank you, Daksha, Malvika, and Matanki for joining us for this session. Uh, it's absolutely incredible to see you guys again after quite a uh, long while and after the journey that we have had for the past six, eight months. Uh, so, so very, very interesting. And I'm very excited for the session today because uh, all of you are going to some brilliant MBA programs worldwide. You've all made it with uh, you know, extremely sort of impressive results. Uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, you've, all of you have done it in style, right? All three of you have had multiple admits, multiple scholarships. And what we want to sort of gauge through this session essentially is uh, learn more about your journey as to what you did, why did you, uh, how did you go about it? Why did you do those things? And at the same time, also present it to you know, future candidates as to what is something that they could do with their application strategies or their own application journey, which could help them uh, make it to the top business schools around the world, like it has worked out for you, right? So before uh, we get started, again, also a warm welcome to all the people who are watching us. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And I hope uh, you enjoy the session. Uh, one thing that I would like to mention is feel free to ask questions. You can ask us questions uh, that you would want. Simply have to type in the chat box. And uh, yeah, let's, let's get started. So as we get started, maybe let's get started with a very quick round of introduction. Uh, for those who are watching us for the first time, my name is Piyush Ranjit. I am the founder of Management Masters. We are a boutique admissions consulting firm for the top MBA programs worldwide. And our candidates have received multiple admits from some of the best business schools around the world. Uh, today, I have with us three candidates who worked with, worked with us last year and who are going to be joining some of the top programs uh, very soon. So, Daksha, uh, she got into multiple programs. She is probably going to be joining Wharton. Malvika is going to be joining uh, INSEAD and Matanki will be joining Georgetown McDonough. But enough from my end, let, let me sort of ask them to introduce themselves. Uh, let's start with Daksha. Uh, okay, so hi, I'm Daksha Sharma and I graduated from Bitspilani Hyderabad campus in 2020. Post that, I, I was working with JP Morgan and when I applied in round two, I had almost three years of work. Uh, I think that's a brief intro that I would give about myself. Thank you, Daksha. Uh, let's go to Malvika. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Malvika, I'm based in Mumbai. Um, so I did my undergrad BBA from NMIMS University. And then post that, I started working at Forbes Advisor, which is the personal finance website of Forbes.com. Um, so I was working as a growth and revenue strategist for their financial services vertical. So a lot of it was involving um, like organic traffic and looking at uh, our users, making sure we're serving their intent as well. Um, yeah, that's about me. Okay. Thank you for that. And let's go to our international candidate, uh, Anki. Thanks, Piyush. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm from Colombo, Sri Lanka. Uh, I think I'm Piyush's first Sri Lankan candidate. Um, so my experience spans across from management consulting, um, as well as wearable technology. And now I'm sort of in the data analytics division um, of Sri Lanka's largest conglomerate. Um, and my background is in biomedical science. Um, that's a small intro on me. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Matanki. And very quickly, if you could just talk about the kind of results that you had, where did you apply, what kind of results did you get, and where are you planning to join? Uh, very brief about that, that would be great. So maybe let's go the other way around this time. Sure. Um, so I got an admit into McDonough, uh, Georgetown, as Pierce said. Uh, I've got a 60K scholarship. Um, I've also gotten an offer from Notre Dame, Mendoza, uh, for 90K scholarship. Um, and NYU, I applied for the NYU Tech MBA. No scholarship, but just an admit there. Uh, and I've decided to go with McDonough because um, the, the summer internship point in the two-year program was something key for me. Um, that's why I'm going with that. Thank you so much. Uh, Malika, would be great to hear from you. Yeah. Um, so I got into four European schools. So I got into London Business School, um, AGC Paris, uh, ESA in Spain, as well as INSEAD. Um, so with ESA, I got in with a 35,000 euro scholarship um, and I'll be joining INSEAD 
um, because it suits my goals of going into consulting as well as just the international network um, and that global mindset is what I'm really looking for. Thank you. Daksha would be great to hear from you as well. Yes. Uh, so I work with Piyush on three applications, Kellogg, uh, Kellogg Northwestern, Chicago Booth and Wharton. And I got into all three of them with a scholarship of 55K from Wharton. And I'll be going ahead with Wharton because I come from an investment banking background and going ahead also, I want to stay in finance and Wharton is known as to be the finance school. So yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, and uh, very quickly, right, coming back to the journey that you've had, all three of you took a very different approach to your applications, right? Uh, so if I recall correctly, Daksha, you took the GMAT, Malika took the GRE, Matanki, just you decided to go with the test waiver. So if you could just help us understand uh, a bit about why did you choose, you know, this particular test that you wanted to take? And did it affect you know, your application strategy, the kind of schools that you wanted to apply to uh, in any way. So maybe let's start with Malika this time. Um, yeah, so I gave the GRE and I got a 322 score. Um, and to be honest, once I'd given the test, I didn't think it was an average score. Um, I honestly thought it was a good score uh, for the schools I was looking um, into. But of course, there were a lot of other applicants from all over the world, as well as India, applying with much higher both GMAT and GRE scores. Um, so the reason I chose the GRE as opposed to the GMAT was a lot because of the attitude that I had towards both of the tests. Um, so for GMAT, a lot of friends in my circle, um, relatives as well, who had been given, who had given the GMAT years before. Um, and a lot of them had mentioned how tough the exam was and they had given multiple attempts. And I think that was the tone I set towards the exam. In my head, it was the hardest exam um, that I would have to give. So I think my approach towards preparing for it was in the same direction. Um, and I think once I, I gave a diagnostic test as well, again, that I did fairly well at um, in the GMAT. But I think just that attitude that I had towards the test that, okay, I can't conquer this was what really affected how I did the practice questions, how I did further tests going on, like practice tests. Um, but with the GRE, when I actually spoke to people who had given the GRE, they were all really helpful and just recommending resources. No one really said, I'm not saying the test is easier, of course, but no one said that the test is the hardest thing you're going to have to do. Um, and I think that uh, affected the way I approached the GRE, which is why I stuck with the GRE. Um, and I think individually, if you have to make a decision, just go with what test. I think a part, like most schools will accept both tests, but go with the test that I think your attitude towards is better because that would really affect how you approach the exam and how you like in the end perform at it as well. Right. And, you know, with the GRE score, did that affect how you chose schools, how you went about the application process? Because I think we had a major sort of focus on the European schools. Right. So I think um, it, I wouldn't say it affected the schools I looked at, because I think for me, the way I approached it was I didn't really select the schools according to my score. I went the other way around. Um, I knew that irrespective of the score I wanted, these were the only schools I wanted to target because I'd researched the schools well in advance and they seemed like the right fit for me. Um, of course, it did. It gets harder when you're sort of comparing your score to an average that the school has published. It, in your head, it's going to get more difficult. Uh, but I don't think that having a lower score than the average is a, like, you don't self-select yourself out of the process just because of your score. Um, try to look at it more holistically because that's how the schools look at it. Right. Uh, coming to Daksha, you you ended up choosing a very traditional path, right? Uh, going for the GMAT. But was that in your mind that you're choosing a traditional path for some reason? Or... Uh, no, not really, actually, Piyush. So uh, I think my test taking is another year of a story. So I would uh, just brief it and say that uh, just before I thought of taking GMAT, I had seen at least two to three colleagues get a 750, 770. So I was very like confidently if they can do, I can also try at least. And then I looked at uh, GRE and then I looked at GMAT. My vocab is very bad. So GRE was out of the picture any day. Right? I can't remember things and my vocab is very bad. Uh, so G my GMAT was like the only option left and the only confidence that I had was I, I know people who have scored, so probably I can also score. And uh, I took two attempts as Malvika said that it's like rarely I have also seen people do it in first attempt. And my first attempt with that score, I applied to ISB. And then you know how panickingly I reached you at the end of November that, okay, I have a better score now. Can we apply somewhere else? 
so yes and i mean i just had the score never had the thought to apply to us or anywhere i think it would be you who suggested where should i apply and then i researched that okay are these schools good enough for me so okay. it's it's very interesting that both of you mentioned you know the, the test that you took was kind of a by product of the environment that you guys were exposed to right mm -hmm. uh, you had seen people who had taken the gmat and scored very highly so you kind of felt naturally affiliated to it and and the opposite for malika right that uh, you had seen people who had taken it multiple times found it very difficult and gre was a different story and you know you kind of very much gravitated towards it um let's go to pathanki because i'm pretty sure you did not have a lot of people who had taken test waivers right so what 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 exactly worked in your case how did you decide you know that this was the way to go Sure, I think in my case, honestly, it was a time factor as well because, um, unlike uh, Daksha and Malavika, I didn't know a lot of people here who took the GMAT, um, and went to the US. Everyone just went to the UK and Australia, which didn't have GMAT as a mandatory thing. Um, so I literally had a month before uni deadlines. Um, that's when I decided that I wanted to go to the US. Um, so and when I googled, you know, the preparation time, it took like it would take ideally three to six months. I was like, okay, no, we're going to do this on time. with work and personal commitments um to so give it a shot to apply for the test waiver obviously um but i must say it obviously limits the ch choices of unis that i would apply to um so you know i can't go for something like a stanford um because they just don't provide any gmat waivers so there were only a select set of schools um out of the top ones that allowed a gmat waiver um and within that obviously you further narrow down on the eligibility criteria so i think georgetown in that case had um they wanted a stem degree and a high gpa in that degree which luckily i had because i studied biomedical science um so that kind of worked out for the best and i think just to increase my chances of getting in uh, getting that wave accepted because obviously i think um adli malavik also said um you're competing with people globally who have very high gmat scores in those schools right so just so that i secure my chances um of success i spoke to different students in those unis um got in touch with people who did apply for the waiver and got that accepted to see what is it different that they did assess their profiles on linkedin to see if there's similarities on mine um so there was a little bit of research there right. and if we if we sort of dive deeper into this aspect of you know how did you select the business schools right so what factors were important for you when you started thinking of which schools to apply to or you know that this is a school that you would definitely want to apply to or this is a school that you would probably pass on yeah, for me as well this question in mm -hmm. any of you now i think Sure. Um, I think in my case, obviously, the test waiver thing was standing priority at that point um, because of the deadlines. Um, something I did look at was the strength of the alumni, um, because networking is one of sort of my goals as well with um, MB, going for an MBA program. So I wanted a really strong alumni network that I can network with, and you know, um, that was something. And also, I guess employment opportunities. um i looked at the employment reports to see what was the percentages and i compared those as well so high chances of getting the internship um yeah those are sort of the top of my head i would say malika you mentioned that you know you had a very strong affinity for the european schools right so why was that the case and if you could just walk us through your thought process of selecting the schools uh, where to apply to yeah i think um so for me i'd been living working born brought up everything in mumbai um and my exposure to really of course mumbai is very international very diverse itself uh, but my proper exposure to really an international environment came from work um and i realized how much i liked the challenge and the excitement and the uncertainty which came, which came with that of course the way we react and the way we work in india is very different to the way people work in let's say the us or even european countries um so i wanted a school that was going to sort of replicate that but to a much larger scale for me um and that's where the european schools came into play all of them had really large um you know diversity in their school not just in terms of the culture where you're coming from but also in terms of your professional background um your academic background where you've been exposed to what sort of in like subjects you're interested in a lot of that was very diverse um so i think the biggest thing for me was just that global mindset international network international community to really broaden my perspective um and the second was i wanted a school that was going to combine both i guess theoretical learning practical learning as well as just learning from your peers um and i think the european schools are really giving that to me cuz 
um, a lot of what schools and business schools will teach you is how to approach a problem. And I wanted that to be, you know, tackled from every single aspect that it was. Um, so the European schools are really just the perfect fit uh, from those two core pillars that I had. And then, Daksha, how did that work out for you? Like, I know that you were... Uh, then, yeah. So, so like... for me, I think uh, I thought of an MBA a couple of years ago. And my reason was very clear because my exposure was only to transactions and uh, the financial aspects of things. So I always wanted to learn more about business, which I was not getting an opportunity currently. But never thought of moving abroad. So my only focus was India. And hence, I applied to ISV. So when I reached out to you or when I had the score, I did not have any idea how schools abroad are or what what their offerings are, what internships are like there. Uh, I think I applied to US only because I was more comfortable. I have family there. So I was like, if I have to relocate, it's a much comfortable geography for me. And uh, my second criteria was that if I am moving abroad, I would like to have something like... Uh, which would expose me to a lot better than what I would get in India here. So hence, it was M7 as per what research I did at that time. And uh, out of that, owing to my inclination towards finance, it was uh, Columbia, Wharton and Booth actually in my mind. Then I talked to you and you suggested me not to apply to Columbia, which obviously didn't turn out well. <laughs> and and other schools, yes, you suggested. And then I did my research on Kellogg because I was not aware of that. And that's how it just went ahead. Makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I want to talk about the applications themselves, right? Uh, and because applications have multiple aspects, they are very extensive, especially I think all of you know, you know apply to multiple schools. What would you say, you know, was the most challenging part of the applications for you guys? Was it the, you know, working on the application data form? Was it the resume, the essays, uh, the B-School research that you had to do, you know, trying to figure out connecting with people, you know, who probably never respond? Uh, what what would you say, you know, was the most difficult aspect of the application process for you? Let, let's start with that, first. So for me, the researching the unique aspects of each school because you have to really deep dive into those websites and see what they are offering. And second was reaching out. I don't know how many LinkedIn connection requests I have sent to people from the like alumni of my undergrad, as well as people I don't know through any connections. And I've actually talked to people who are NRIs and settled there, no connection at all, but they just responded to my request. So I think for each school, I have talked to at least four or five people just to understand the school, have that uh, element in my essays through which I can show that I have researched on this school. So that was the most difficult and at times most irritating part also because people won't respond at all. Mata, what would you say, you know, what was the most challenging part for you? I think, to be honest, for me, it was articulating on the essay um, because I had the stories and the experiences, but getting it on paper somehow could be <laughs> really hard, you know. Um, and I think that's where I need to thank you, Yush, because I, 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 remember, think... I remember reading 1500 word essays for a 500 word essay. For a 500 word essay, yeah. Um, you know, it, it could either be me rambling on too much or just not getting to the point, you know, and just not being specific. Um, so I think that was probably the most challenging part for me. Um, but um, yeah, thanks but to did you. Did you also connect with a lot of people, talk to a lot of people uh, from Sorry? Did you also connect with a lot of candidates and alums from the... Yeah, so I, um, I this might sound a bit ridiculous. I, I don't think everyone has to do this, but what, because similar to Daksha's point on um, not everyone replies, I just sent messages to every single person <laughs> that was scrolling on the list. Um, and luckily at each school, I made, I think, 15 people who I was in touch with that I spoke to. Um, and then I picked the common stuff from each of those. Um, and I think for one of the schools, because it was Ivy that I applied to, um, I even messaged uh, the director. <laughs> and then I think I heard of that department um, to find out what candidates look for. So I may have gone a little overboard, but it worked. It worked pretty nicely for you, right? Uh, Malika, what, same question to you. What was the most yeah. challenging? I think um, I would say most challenging and most fun as well, similar to what Daksha said, is just researching the schools. Um, so I didn't want to be in a position where I felt I didn't know the school inside out. So I went extremely overboard with researching the school. I had like checked every single page on their website. Um, and because I've worked in search before, I'm really good at just finding things on Google. 
um and i sort of transferred that to linkedin as well like they said connected with a lot of people uh the only reason i signed up for linkedin premium was because i couldn't send any more connection requests or search for people anymore uh that's how much i had like really reached out to people um but i just wanted to know the school inside out one what the school was presenting through their website um through their instagram through their linkedin facebook every any aspect of their social media and then what students studying um they had actually thought about it as well as what alumni had thought about it so i just really went and connected with everyone um and just one tip for like they mentioned a lot of people won't respond to you of course they're going to be busy they may not see your message i would say don't send out a generic message to anyone really try to find out what you can learn from them they're much more likely to respond if you you're researched as well and you know exactly what you want answered because if you're just going to go with the generic question of hey i want to learn about the school they're probably not going to want to put that time into you but if you re like research and they find out that okay they did this particular internship that the school facilitated and you want to learn more about it they're much more likely to share their story with I, you i have a question which i often get from candidates here which i think you guys would be you know perfect to answer is that you know okay everybody says that you know you have to reach out to people you have to connect with students alums and you know you need to talk to them uh, what do you talk about what do you really you know when if you have somebody in front of you what do you want to talk to them about uh if you could sort of just touch upon that because i think all three of you connected with a lot of people did a lot of research at this aspect so what did you gain out of those connections and you know, which you could not have gained out of reading from the website for instance feel free to sort of take up the question i think um if i may we'll go first i think there was there's a, obviously a, like depends on the topic as well i'm looking for and which stage i am at the application um but for example something i did um connect with on was i applied for tech mbas right so in that case i didn't really know too much about the tech mba versus a normal mba so i would ask the candidates about you know in terms of the curriculum the not what's on the website but ask directly from them what do uh, lectures you know usually focus on more is it the tech angle or is it the business angle um and and what i found out was also you know things that won't be on a website they were just like okay, you know some of this is marketing fluff on the website um and in reality the curriculum isn't as streamlined as it's shown on the website um or you know this school is more business focused than tech focused whereas this is more tech focused than business focused so you know those are conversations you're not going to get on a website so those are the type of questions i'd ask and then oh. the Yeah, yeah so. adding to what Matanki said, I think uh, for me it was more around career. So I was uh, aiming for a venture capital in my essays and everything. So I reached out to most of the, and I had specified actually fintech uh, oriented VCs. Now finding that on a website is very difficult. You can find VCs, but that. So I reached out to people who were working in a fintech oriented role to understand what kind of companies come there, like their names. Maybe professors were quite famous on teaching those kind of. Uh, a uh, subject so i could mention them in their essays i in even for the clubs i have actually emailed presidents of various clubs just to understand the projects they pursue and that actually added like a good point in my essay to mention that i talked to this person and he has told me that these projects have been going on so much of an insight which you won't get from a website right makes makes a lot of sense and malvika anything that stands out for you apart from these anything that you want to add um, i think also the just if let's say you're applying from take like dakshana i like from india and mathanki from sri lanka i would say also speak to while you can speak to anyone from any country studying at the school but also speak to someone who represents the background you represent because that'll give you a more accurate picture of what your trajectory could look like so someone like let's say someone working in consulting wanting to go into you know a better consulting firm versus someone who's not worked in consulting at all and has maybe a background like you will tell a very different story to what employment reports or anything on the website will tell you so just understand that okay because as an as an international applicant you're also going to be looking at visa and work visa and all of that also so just understand if the person you're speaking to is you how did that story look for them as well as then just connect to people who are doing things that you're interested in doing even if you don't your background doesn't align with them Makes makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's come to a bit more sort of a, a question which is more focused on you guys personally, right? So, what do you think you know really made you guys stand out in terms of your applications, which which helped you on these admits? Uh, and then you know how exactly did you sort of bring these elements out in your applications at all? Right. Uh, so, what what actually do you think helped you stand out? 
uh, maybe we start with Malika this time. Okay. Um, so I think for me, it was um, also the background that I was applying with. Um, if you look at like the uh, class profile of almost any business school, you'll see not as many coming from a marketing background. And I further worked in a niche in the marketing background. So even though it was growth and revenue strategy, I worked more in the digital marketing space, looking a lot at the website. So I think that helped me stand out um, a little bit as well. And plus I had a bit of like um, fun extracurricular projects, for example, like I'd taken part in this um, modeling competition from Tanishk and just like that social message that came with that. So I think just find out unique aspects about you. It doesn't need to be the traditional uh, what do you think works for a business school? Something that's unique about you, even if you feel like it's the most normal thing in the world, can really stand out um, to a school. So. And how did you identify that, you know, this is something that you might need to focus on that, you know, that could put you into that unique aspect or unique pool? I think I'll, I would give a lot, majority of that credit to working with you as well. I think because I had a lot of these stories in my head. Um, and when we had our initial like profile evaluation calls or the workshops where we were just understanding what my story was, um, I think you were able to really dig deep into what the root of certain was. So while I could, while I, of course, at the face of it knew what I was doing, you really helped understand the purpose behind that, the impact behind that. And I think that really translates to a school um, is just understanding what impact did you have, not just on yourself, but on others as well. So I think just that profile, those building, uh, like understanding my strengths, my weaknesses, um, all of that, the workshops that we had with you was just super helpful in getting those stories out. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Matanki, what do you think worked well for you, uh, apart from obviously being from Sri Lanka? Right? I think that, that had a major sort of... Um, um, I think, you know, like what Malavika said, the uniqueness of my story as well, um, you know, and, and to an earlier point, uh, I remember someone mentioned with that applicants are usually looked at at a very holistic view. So obviously not having a waiver <laughs> was also, I guess, a bit standing out, um, not in a great way. But I think I kind of balanced it out with my experience. So, you know, I graduated with a biomedical science degree from the UK, worked in consulting and then went into uh, a wearable tech arm uh, in Sri Lanka. Um, so, you know, it's a variety of experiences um, over the last four or five years. So I was able to pick out stories from that. Um, and yeah, and thanks to you, I think I was able to put that on paper properly. I've come to the feedback for about me as well. So <laughs> that's, that's good. But that's, that's good to, that's good to get. Uh, Naksha, what do you think, you know, uh, made you unique or allowed you to uh, think? So what, what was that extent? So I think uh, I come from an overrepresented engineering background. So that was definitely not a help. Uh, but I, what I now feel when I think back is that I had clarity of my past, present and future, uh, my goals there. And it linked very well to my personal life and the experiences I had in my personal life. So what I'm doing right now was also linked to an experience in the past. What I want to do is also linked to something that I've been experiencing. So I think probably that made me stand out that I'm clear about what I have done and what I want to do. And I think my interviews went very well. So that was another point. Now we come to the feedback about that, right? So <laughs> you think, you know, what, what, what did we help you with or how do you think, uh, you know, associating with us actually helped you out with your applications in the world? I'll go on. I'll go with this. Uh, so for me, I had extremely less time for to work on three applications. And uh, I think Piyush changed his approach and just gave me a very proper timeline. I think we had one call just to set deadlines for each application. So that was extremely helpful. And secondly, just so these stories which I'm mentioning, the personal link to my goals, Piyush asked me so many why's that I think these stories came to me. Okay, this is why I'm doing this thing right now. So at times I did not have answer to his why's, but then I used to think for 15 minutes and I was like, okay, I, this happened. Hence, I thought of doing this. So that why was extremely important in the entire uh, essay writing, I would say. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe, Malika, I see you are on mute, so maybe. Uh, so. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think for me, it was, I had a lot of, small pieces that I had and what you really helped was bring that into just one holistic sort of circle um, and just combine all of that information. 
uh because you will be researching like any applicant is going to be researching themselves but really how to make sure that you know you're combining your story with what you've researched very well is what um i think you really helped with uh plus i feel you were very honest from the get go uh about you know chances of getting of course no one can predict that but just based on my profile and your of course expert opinion you were very honest about um what how it would look or whether i would get into a certain school or not and i think that was really important a lot of people especially your family is going to want to you know boost your ego tell you you can get into any school you want you do need that realistic voice in there as well um to just let you know that okay even if you are going to apply perhaps like this is something you should be prepared for so i think that was really important um because for, for like take for the example isb i really thought i would get in um and you had said that right in the first profile evaluation call that isb is like not likely to happen but these european schools that you've selected possibly are so i think that just that honesty and realisticness um uh, was important thank you so much but thank you uh, you know i think i think i've previously shared that and uh, that you thought i was an online scam but i to bring that <laughs> up i'm hoping that was going to come yeah. up <laughs> So, I, I mean, um, yeah, China, you know, I think if you're international on this call, you could relate that, you know, you don't, if you don't know anyone from sort of your countries who've worked with Piyush, um, you know, you're just a bit skeptical on, you know, uh, purchasing stuff online, right? So, yeah, I thought he was an online scammer um, on a story. But uh, now, and then everything changed really quickly uh, because I realized he was normal and an actual human being behind the screen. Um, but what I, you know, jokes aside, I know what really helped me was also being in two different countries. You were still very sort of organized and methodical. Like, you know, I'm the type of person who will say, message you at like ungodly hours, <laughs> you know, asking to review this, review that, obviously juggling work and personal stuff. um but you always made a point to reply on time um when you're working hours were you know when you're within that working hour period um and i didn't have to pester you <laughs> to get things done um that was a huge relief for me um but more importantly i think to what the other two said as well in terms of direct blunt feedback <laughs> you know like you're honest and you ask the right questions um it could be so basic you could ask the right questions to make me think of the story i need to put on paper you know so that really helped um, a lot so yeah you uh, i'm blushing with all the good feedback that i've had uh, so let's move on to the next one what would you what would your advice be for you know one advice from each one of you uh, for future aspirants who will be looking to apply to similar schools some of the best schools around the world uh, what would be your best tip that this is something that you absolutely need to do to get the chances I think I, something I I definitely tell everyone is don't self reject. Um, you know, don't tell yourself that oh it's Stanford. I'm not gonna get in because it's Stanford. No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> you know, just you surprise yourself. Um, and I think you know it's always better to give it a shot anyway. Um, you know, like I I always say, aim for the stars, and you may reach the sky. You know, so no harm done. um if you get in great you surprise yourself if you don't get in it's you know every rejection is a redirection so yeah that's actually that's great that's great yes uh maybe yeah yeah actually what matanki said is quite true uh i think i reached out to you and a couple of other people as well and everyone said that don't just target m7 you might not get into any it's over ambitious so and i did try i got into whatever i applied so don't self reject have a brief idea so my work ex was less but my gmat was high probably your gmat is low but your work ex is much better and more in term so get a rational opinion but don't self reject i would say and um, another is just uh, research schools beforehand one month is not a good time to do these things Now, now, actually, just to, just to add on to that, uh, now the time period that we are in, we are in April, uh, and uh, so, you know, round one deadlines are still going to be in September. It's a five month gap that you have. Uh, this is a very, very good time period for you to start working, you know, uh, re- reaching out to people, connecting with students, alumni, uh, because not a lot of people are doing that at this point of time. So the the chances of you getting a response from somebody are much higher. compared to if you would reach out to the same people uh, let's say in july or august where there are 100 more candidates who have sort of dropped them a message 
Uh, so getting started with that preschool research is a this is a very very good time to do that, right? Uh, before we come to Malika, very quickly, we are going to open for live questions after this. So if you have questions, uh, please feel free to put that in the chat box, and then you can sort of pick those up uh, post the uh, post we end this. So now Malika, what what would your advice be? I think the same. Definitely don't self-reject yourself out of the equation altogether. The worst that would go in if you don't get selected is your application fee. And if you keep doing that, you're going to really ramp up all the application fees and then it's going to be a lot. Um, but if you really feel that you're a good fit with the school, um, don't self-reject yourself out of the process for sure. Um, and I think also plan well in advance. So I think I'd kept my GRE test pretty last moment Um even though I've been planning to give it for a really long time. So I would say just make sure you're planning well in advance. Because when if you're trying to give your GRE, write your essays, connect with people, research schools, and work at the same time, it's you're going to miss out on some part of it, if not all. So I say just do everything well in advance. Um, if you're thinking of giving your GRE or GMAT, book your test date first. Don't think that, oh, I'll study and then eventually I'll book my test date. Book your test date so that's your like final date of when you know you need to study to it. So, yeah. uh, so I just, uh, I just wanted to add something um, to what Malavika said because the application fee thing obviously was definitely painful um, but for future candidates something I would advise is if you ask for a one-on-one -on -one consultation through email to some of these unis um, and you have it they give you a they waive it they waive the application fee as well sometimes actually that, that correlates to one of the most strongest points that you guys have mentioned if you do your school research well You'll probably be attending a lot of events. You'll be doing a lot of one-to-one -one meetings. You'll be talking to alums and students, which can actually result in a lot of fee waivers. Okay. Uh, especially, this is, this is especially popular in US schools, not so much for European schools, but this is, this is definitely quite possible for, and, and uh, uh, it can help you save a lot of money. Uh, I think, I think Mataki, you did not spend anything on application fees, right? I I think all my applications fees were waived, um, except one. They don't offer waivers, so I got a discount. But yeah. So, so you ended up saving almost a thousand dollars just on application. Yeah, basically. Right. Uh, I think we are done with the session. Uh, anything or anything, any aspects that you guys want to sort of highlight before we start start taking up questions from people. Uh, Anything that you want to share? Um, I think also, you know, something, this is a question I had when I was applying was, how do I know what industry I want to sort of go into, um, you know, when if I'm going to go with an MBA? Um, and that's something um, recently I came across through these conversations I had on LinkedIn, um, was that there's a book called What Color Is Your Parachute? Um, that's supposed to help figure out um, what industry you're sort of meant to do look like looking at your skills. So just wanted to share that as well. Yeah. well thank you for that. So let's let's take some questions uh, online. Uh, one thing regarding the questions that I would really suggest people, uh, don't get very personal, right? So people are not going to share their personal details or uh, personal plans here. Uh, second, do not get personal about you. If you are asking for feedback on your profile, we mentioned some few things. I don't think we have the time enough or the knowledge about your candidature enough to be able to answer those questions. Uh, what I would really suggest is keep things a bit generic so that you know it not only helps you, but it also helps other candidates sort of learn more about the MBA application process or any bugs that they might have. I think one question that I see is uh, how did you guys it's a very interesting question. So considering the current economic recession that is going throughout the world, uh, how do you guys sort of convince yourself that maybe going abroad is a good thing to do? Uh, and you know there could be some negative repercussions based on the economic scenario that is happening. So was that a major consideration for you guys? How did you sort of, what was your thought process behind that? Any of you could share. Anyone? Uh, so for, yeah, for me, it was a little concern that, you know, the recession is going on, moving to US. It's a lot of investment. But then I thought that uh, it's two years down the line, maybe things will get better. But 
an MBA is not just that post two years. Maybe I'll not get a great job, but I can always switch jobs to the degree that I have, to the skills that I have, and I can get better because I'm going to a great school. So that was the thought process I kept. Makes makes a lot of sense. I think yeah. Similarly for me as well. I think um. if you you'll be better equipped not just because you'll have a degree of course but just because of the learning you're going to get as opposed to if you were dealing with that recession as you are currently um so i think that really adds and like taksha said the mba is not just like if you look at the roi it's not something you'll get immediately it's really a long term game um and from whoever i've spoken to alumni who have you know graduated whether that's 2008 or in 2020 when you know the economies were going through the worst time they've still said that they don't regret their decision because they've seen that payoff come in several different ways even years down the line right right i think so sorry right no i think i same for the uh, what the daksha and malavika said as well i think just give it a shot either way is what i'm going through as well and also apart from skill set what comes network um and with that network you can do a lot of great things so yeah uh there's another question on a similar lines right as to you know is it still uh you know given the political scenarios or the uh, you know the the uncertainty about jobs how how visible is it or how viable do you think uh you know mbas would be generally my answer to this is obviously the current you know economic recession is very very palpable everybody understands this everybody knows this and current students who are graduating are definitely feeling the heat of this right uh for people who are planning to apply this year what you have to keep in mind is will apply this year you will go in 2025 and you will graduate in 2026 or 2027 right uh what exactly the economic scenario would be in 26 or 27 uh none of us know. Like you don't know, I don't know that. Esports definitely don't know that. Even even your employers would not know that. So, what exactly the economic situation would be? Nobody knows that. So, why are you taking a decision that uh, based on that you know uncertain aspect at this point of time? So, this is something that you also need to consider. Essentially, think of it from the other side. People who are graduating today in a very difficult economic market did not. decide to go for an mba because they knew that this would be the case that you know we would go if we would graduate in a recession it would be very fun right uh, they did not do it knowingly nor will you do anything knowing this none of us know the future so uh, let's move to the other question uh, okay interesting question how did you guys manage you know gmat gri prep with along with your job uh so maybe daksha and mandika better suited to answer this uh, i think i'm a morning person so i used to always wake up at 6 6:30 study before i go to office so that would like even if i don't feel like when after coming back from office even if i did not feel like studying i i knew that i had done my part for the day so that was my approach weekends obviously i used utilize most of it as much as i can and i closed myself for a month before my exam so i was in my home study right malika do you think that resonates with daksha uh no I, i'd say i'm not a morning person at all um uh, my i think maybe two or three months i was sleeping at 4 am every day i would not recommend that at all because you will not realize it later but then when i started to uh, fall sick and then the the sleepless nights really caught up um so i would say just make sure that you're balancing a lot of people focus more on the hours that you put into studying um when the hours really don't matter i would say just make sure that whatever you're doing even if it's 30 minutes of your day every day make sure you're really maximizing that in because a lot of these exams whether that's gmat or gre a lot of it comes to strategy um it's not about how good you are at math it's about how you really break down that problem um so say even if it's 30 minutes make sure you're really diving into the strategy of it and then eventually you'll start to be able to solve those problems um and just a tip for if you're looking for a resource for gre i would really recommend using gregmat um it's a website and i think it it's maybe 5 dollars a month so comparatively a lot cheaper to your other um services that you have for test prep so i'd really recommend gregmat uh, adding to what malvika said uh, i would say the same thing consistency is the key study for 30 minutes but study every day and uh, yeah in terms of resources don't just 
like for me the guides did not work really well uh, i did all the entire guide but i also took up extra questions from gmat club so just think what works for you and practice as much as possible uh, thank you uh, we have another question regarding b school research how do you research about you know which school is good for a particular industry uh, so i think anyone who wants to take this up I think that also comes with talking to people from those schools um because and also the employment reports the schools publish um you'll see usually they have sort of like a pie chart or a bar chart showing casing which industry most of their students went to um and then you can sort of double check with students you speak to right uh, thank you uh we have a question regarding our scholarships right so what do you guys think which aspect of your applications help you get scholarships this is a very interesting question. Like, what what do you think worked in your favor, which helped you get scholarships, maybe? Right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put it here very quickly with a comment. Uh, the look on their faces should tell you that you know scholarship decisions are extremely, extremely opaque, right? Uh, it's not just about a very high GMAT score or something, you know, a very high brand value that you bring. Uh, scholarship decisions are probably at least five to 10 times more opaque than, you know, your chances of getting an admit. So even with, I think with all these candidates, right, uh, you have things which are going completely haywire. So Matanki, for example, she has scholarships of almost 150K from two schools combined, but then she also gets an admit from NYU STEM. And she does not get any scholarship. Similarly, Daksha has a scholarship of 55,000 from what? But she does not have any scholarships from Booth or Kelo. And if you ask us, you know, what would be the reason why she did not get a scholarship? I don't think, I don't have an answer. And I don't think Daksha will be able to find an answer either. The same thing with Malika. She got a scholarship from IES in Spain, but she did not get scholarship from other schools. So scholarship decisions are very, very opaque in nature and they're very unpredictable. It completely depends on the B school, their admission committees, what they are looking for at that point of time, what are they trying to optimize for, uh, which is completely out of your hands and you cannot optimize for that at all, ever. Anything that you guys would want to add to that? I would just um, add on to that saying that even though you can't really, like you said, optimize your chances of getting a scholarship, you can apply in a round where more scholarships are available to students. So the I think the later on the rounds you go, whether that's round three or round four, you'll have maybe three scholarships possibly to apply to or not even any at all. So let's say the earlier you apply, the more chance, like not technically chances, but the, just the more scholarships you have to apply to. So let's say apply earlier just to maximize that. Oh. And like even some schools have um just not just before round one they have something called early round or early registration so even that would help because that's when they have the most money to give scholarships. Right, that would help absolutely. You're right, right? You're because you're applying early. But even people who get into early admits, they are not guaranteed a scholarship. Not guaranteed. Oh yeah, not. It's not going to be guaranteed. It could still be that somebody gets an admit but does not get a scholarship because scholarship decisions are really really. You know, goes down to the admission committee, what they are looking for, what they are trying to sort of really figure out and how they want to, how do they want to build a class profile and everything. Uh, so it's very difficult to sort of come down to a very, very unique aspect, the specific aspects that you can sort of optimize. Uh, then we have, okay, that's an interesting question. Is it necessary to have absolute clarity on what you want to do post MBA while submitting applications? Yeah. I mean, it does help. <laughs> it does help definitely because, um, you know, a lot of um, unis expect to ask you, ask you about your goals, your short term goals, your long term goals, and especially at the interview time um, that come up. So it does help. Um, but one thing I would say from talking to students is that once you go there, it is bound to change. <laughs> once you start meeting other people, um, you know, exploring different courses. And, and the uni is not going to hold you accountable for that and be like, oh, this is not what you said in the interview, so we're kicking you out. No, that doesn't happen. Um, maybe yeah. maybe let's, let's change this question a bit, right? Uh, why do you guys think that having clarity on 
post MBA goals actually helps uh, based on your experiences. How did it help you guys in your applications uh, in general that you had clarity about what you want to do? So I can go on this. Uh, what I think exactly is for me, uh, my profile did not exactly have a spike that people talk about for M7. So that played a very important role that I was very sure and clear about what I was talking in the interview, in my essays, everywhere. Even during the interviews, you are asked, what if you don't get into this, what you're trying to? So at that time, having the clarity that I want to understand the business helped because then I could pick out another sector and speak about it. So just to be clear to your ad com, your interviewer, that you, you have a clear thought process, I think it's important. I think the clarity really helped showcase the fit for the school because I think if you have clarity about what you want to do post you can really realize how you can leverage what the school has to offer to reach there and I think that's what the school really wants to look for is that you're not just applying to any business school but based on what you want their school is the only one technically that can you know help you meet that goal so I think that really helps just showcase that you're sure about um, their school in particular and about where you want to go as well. And likely, like uh, Daksha said, having a backup plan. Um, let's say, because sometimes things will not work out, but are you sure that you can manage even without that? I think they like to see that resilience um, just in your application as well. Thank you so much. Uh, any other questions, please feel free to sort of put that in the chat box. Uh, we'll take that up. Otherwise, I'll thank these ladies and you know, we will close the session. Uh, but so far, it's it's been absolutely a pleasure first working with you guys, uh, helping you through the MBA application journey, uh, getting to know your stories, right? Playing a small part and sort of streamlining them, helping you sort of connect the dots. Uh, obviously, applying to multiple schools through through multiple rounds of uh, stress reviews, right? uh, and uh, now sort of talking together, talking about your journey and sort of sharing that aspect with everyone. Uh, a very final question to close up the session. Will not graduating from an IIT, NIT, BITS, SRCC be a major handicap for top 15 USB schools? What would you suggest? No. No, I, I don't think so at all. I don't, I think, sure, the name uh, is more recognizable, but again, don't self-select yourself based on your background as well. Uh, if you've come from a school that possibly very few people know of, don't think that no one's going to listen to you or accept you. So yeah. It's about your story. You know, they want to make sure you resonate with their values. You're in the holistic application. Um, I believe you're a good person and you can do this, you know. They don't care where you come from. Thank you, everyone. It was absolutely lovely talking to you guys, catching up again after a very, very long time. I wish you all three of you, the very best for your MBA programs uh, and whatever lies beyond that. And obviously, we'll remain in touch. Uh, but thank you so much for joining and sharing your journeys. It's very, very sort of, uh, great to have you guys here. And uh, really looking forward to hearing more from your journeys later on. Thank you for having Thank you, Piyush. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, everyone, for joining as well. Thanks for your questions. I hope this was a useful session for you. Uh, but uh, feel free to sort of reach out to us if you have any questions or if you need any help for uh, applications for MBA programs. Uh, a very quick sort of, I forgot to say that earlier, but we do have a special campaign going on for female candidates who want to enroll with us. So if you want some discounts, reach out to us. We, can, we might be able to help you into some of the people.